what are the things that you know that you are able to do, that you are efficient with doing inside of your system when it comes to shipping products or when it comes to giving information as far as you know inventory or uh, labeling products or packaging your products or providing shipment notifications or doing any of those different things as though you're doing them manually, what are those deficiencies? So remember, EDI is here to automate those things. So if you have deficiencies where you're not able to label or you're not able to do shipment notifications or your, your limitations are there, know those before you look to automate because now you're going to have to start planning on can your system handle what's being asked of you from that EDI entity, trading partner, however you want to refer to it. Hey everyone, Jim Gonzalez here, EDI Support. So I'm glad you're, you're watching our videos. If you like them, give us a thumbs up. If you want to continue to watch as we upload new videos, subscribe to the channel, click on that little bell icon. Um, we're here for you to enjoy these things. But what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about, are you brand new to EDI? So you're an EDI supplier and somebody's reached out to you and said, Hey, we want to start doing EDI with you. What does that mean? Well, there's some steps that you're going to need to do and you're going to need to think about of how you're going to handle that. Okay. So what are the things that you know that you are able to do that you are efficient with doing? inside of your system when it comes to shipping products or when it comes to giving information as far as you know inventory or uh, labeling products or packaging your products or providing shipment notifications or doing any of those different things as though you're doing them manually what are those deficiencies so remember edi is here to automate those things so if you have deficiencies where you're not able to label or you're not able to do shipment notifications or your your limitations are there know those before you look to automate because now you're going to have to start planning on can your system handle what's being asked of you from that edi entity trading partner however you want to refer to them so what are the requirements what are you going to need and maybe there's some adjustments that you want to do or you should do before you start to use and do EDI. Um, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to look at that system that you have in place and you're going to need to see what are they asking for? What's that trading partner want? Do they want to exchange? In most cases, when you're a supplier and you're selling products, they're going to want to exchange a purchase order. That purchase order could be an ANSI X12, it could be an orders, it could be many different facets or file formats, okay? Also, what are they going to want next? Do they need you to electronically acknowledge that order and what you can ship and what you can handle and what you can deal with? Can your system do that? Or do you need the EDI platform to have those capabilities so that you can do that because you're making up for something that you can't do in your ERP or accounting software or whatever it may be. You just got to make sure that you're handling that. And the other key when you're doing this is I always suggest handle the things that you're able to do. Don't handle the things that you're not able to do thinking that you're going to appease that trading partner. All you're going to do is you're going to cause issues. All you're going to do is you're going to cause options for chargebacks and all of those different things that can come with that. So don't feel as though you have to do everything that they're asking for. Be honest, tell them what you can do and what you can't do, but plan it out, figure out what are those requirements? What are mandatory? What are optional? What are the things that your system can handle? So when you're dealing with that purchase order and you're having that purchase order acknowledgement sent out, now we need to actually ship our products. In our process, as a supplier, do I have a 3PL or do I store my own products and ship my own products? Does it come straight from the manufacturer? How is it handled? Who's able to handle a requirement like an ASN or a shipment notification? Is that going to come from you? Because you're packaging the goods, you're labeling the products, you're doing all that, you're sending it out. FedEx, UPS, whatever it may be, 
or is somebody else doing that for you? Do you have a third party logistics or an outside warehouse that's handling that for you? Or is it coming straight from the manufacturer and it's getting sent straight to the customer or the store or whatever that may be? So you have to think about that. Typically, I suggest whoever's doing the packaging of the goods should label it and supply the, the ship notification, whether it's an ASN or it's another XML document or whatever it may be. So you want that information to come from them not from your system because you didn't physically put the product together. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. It gets a little hazy and gets a little hard in configurations, but it can still be done. But again, you're thinking of these things. So you're laying out your process and you're figuring out where do I need to fill gaps or where do I have questions where maybe I can reach out to a consulting team like EDI support and I can say, Hey, Here's what I have. What would you recommend? What have you seen others do in the past? What do you have current clients doing? We can share that information. We can tell you this is the way we see it to make your life easier, to make your life better and get into those conversations with your 3PL, with your manufacturer, with your internal staff and lay it out. Don't just jump in to jump in because you think, oh, that's the way I'm going to do this. Don't do that. Answer some of those questions ahead of time. And if you don't know what those questions are that you should be asking, reach out to somebody like us who can help walk you through that and figure it out. Look at what that trading partner is asking for. So again, first, grab the information that they're looking for. Figure out the shortcomings that you have inside of your system. Next, lay out the process. Figure it all out. What's being required? Purchase order, purchase order acknowledgement, advanced ship notice or ASN, invoicing. After the invoice, how am I going to track errors? How am I going to rectify things? How am I going to do those things to keep everybody inclusive? Inventory reports, maybe point of sale documents. There's different things that you're going to factor in depending on the trading partner that you're doing, depending on the prop type of product that you're supplying. So figure that all out, get it laid out, do those various steps to put it all together. After you now had it all together and you have essentially what you need to fill and the gaps that you need to take care of, what type of EDI system do you want? Do you want one that's going to be offshore that you're not having to worry about or outsourced, however you want to call it? Do you want one that's going to be in the cloud? So it's, it's hosted. Somebody else worries about the server, somebody else worries about the maintenance, somebody else worries about the updates, all of those things. Or do you want it in your own cloud? And you'll worry about that cloud and you'll be a licensed software and you want it or you want it on a physical server. Figure out what's that EDI platform that's going to make sense for you. Do you need a platform to make up for shortcomings? Because you need it to be able to print labels, you need it to be able to do packing lists, you need it to be able to do these other things that you can't do in your current system. And you're like, you know what? I'll just handle that inside of the EDI platform. Do you want an outside EDI department? Do you want internal where you're going to look and you're going to try to find somebody that's going to come in and work for you as a physical employee, where you're going to pay them benefits, you're going to pay them a substantial amount of money on a yearly basis, whatever it may be. Figure those things out. What makes sense for you? What's your technical stack? How do you have things configured? Do you have servers? Do you not have servers? Or is it virtual machines? What fits into your mold of an organization? Don't think that just because everybody else is doing it this way, that's the way that you should do it. No, make it fit you, make it fit your organization, make it do what you want it to do, or understand if you're getting something that's off the shelf compared to something that's a custom EDI integration because there's custom and then there's off the shelf. Off the shelf, you can't modify. It's done that way, everybody does it, this is how it works. Slight modifications might happen, but not major ones. So figure out which model also makes sense for you. Which one do you wanna go with? How do you wanna pay for it? What's recommended? Again, if you have questions, reach out to somebody like us who goes about reviewing all these different systems. The next thing that you want to do 
is while you're looking at it is now we start to prioritize who do we need to deal with first? If we have multiple trading partners coming to us and they've been stacking up waiting for us to get EDI, who's a priority? Do we base it on the amount of documents? Do we base it on how much their revenue is? Do we base, what do we base it on? Figure out and prioritize them, put them in a list. And even if you're migrating to a whole new system or you're setting up a brand new system, which one makes sense? Who makes sense on take the top five? If you're doing, if you have 50 trading partners, say you're an existing, who do you, who do you want to take care of? Who needs to be taken care of? I usually tell clients the, the, the big thing is this is every way that I look at it in most businesses, when you are a supplier, it's the 90, 10 rule. 90% of your clients are only doing 10% of your revenue, whereas 10% of your clients are doing 90% of your revenue. And most of the time that 10% of trading, 10% of clients are also going to ask you for EDI because they're typically larger organizations when you're a supplier. They're the Amazon, the Walmart, the Target, whoever you can think of, um, especially in the retail space. So prioritize, figure out who you need to take care of, who's maybe bulking, who's been asking for this for a long time and you just haven't done it. Weigh those pros and cons and also help you figure out, hey, as these new clients come on, what's going to be our thresholds? Where are we figuring out that it makes sense for us to use EDI and it doesn't make sense? Me? My belief is it always makes sense for EDI. If you're doing business with them and you can automate it, and you don't have to worry about paying somebody to do that function or that feature. Why not? Automate it. Make your life easier. Put the checks and balances in from a computer standpoint instead of a human standpoint. That's just my thoughts. And then basically the final thing that we want to do is we want to start to realize how are we going to implement all of this, who's going to be the partners that we're going to be leveraging, who's going to be working with us, who's going to be doing the implementation, who's going to be doing the different pieces. Are we going to do it all ourselves? We're going to have somebody outsourced. Who's going to project manage, who's going to put that entire project together and oversee it so that we're successful and we hit the dates that we need to, whether they're internal dates, external dates, whether they're trading partners, who's going to take care of that. So now we've gotten it taken care of and in place. So we're tested out end to end testing, making sure everything's flowing, everything's doing what it needs to do. Then there's a handoff. Now this handoff could occur if you have a full outsourced EDI department where you're reaching out and basically they're handling everything for you or an internal EDI department. The handoff is once the implementation and everything moves live, is now who's going to do the monitoring? Who's going to look into those errors? Who's going to interact with your said trading partners? Who's going to do those things to make your life easier and keep things flowing? Who's going to sit in on meetings when you're planning, maybe you're planning a move to a, a new ERP where you're doing things down the road. If you have this implemented, who needs to maintain it? Who's going to keep it running? Who's going to monitor it on a daily basis? Who's going to do that stuff? You need somebody that's going to be responsive and handling things on a daily basis. You don't want somebody that is literally going to sit back and say, Hey, we'll get back to you in three to five days, five to seven business days in the EDI world. You don't have that luxury. That luxury is not there because maybe you're not getting paid. Well, you're extenuating the terms. If you have errors, you want to get those things processed into their system and everything up and running. Those are the ways and those are the steps. And that's how I segment looking at your brand new EDI supplier and you need to get up and running. So any questions, reach out again, Jim Gonzalez, EDI support. I hope you have a great day.